Recording in progress. Welcome, everybody. If this is your first time of being part of the Professionals and Entrepreneurs Fellowship, you are welcome. This will definitely be a special, special day in your life because I can guarantee you by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can never be part of this community any day, any time and go back the same. You cannot leave back the same because God is always in the business of moving us from glory to glory. This is an incredible community of kingdom entrepreneurs and professionals who put God at the center of their careers and their businesses to his glory. And God has been very faithful in this ministry. And every Monday morning, we gather like this to dig deep into the word and to grow ourselves. And of course, to pray for career and for our businesses. Everybody, you're welcome. And let's get deep into the word. And then we pray and we are done and we get out of here and go start our week in the power of the Holy Ghost. All right, we are looking at, we started last week, um, it will be a two-part series, hopefully we'll finish today. Uh, we have been looking at from slavery to dominion. And last week, we I taught extensively on moving from slavery to dominion, and we were using and we we are and we will continue to use Daniel as our uh, blueprint, as our model to rising to dominion from the place of slavery and captivity. And last week we looked at a couple of key things that are critical to the rising of anybody. And today we will continue with that process. And I can categorically tell you from experience, from research and from studies and from you know, my own personal journey, I can tell you that if you are anybody that desires to really be impactful, to be significant, to bring transformation, to bring contribution, to really be that significant pillar in your family, you know, in your community, and why not the nation, and why not the continent, and why not the global landscape as a whole, these are key pillars that you have to understand, and not only understand, but take steps on a daily basis to begin to practice these things in your life, and you will definitely um, see that particular change. So the question I'm tempted to ask you is, after last time, last week's teaching, and, and, and talking about these kingdom principles to rise into the place of dominion, and what have you done with them? What part of that principles have you started practicing and implementing uh, leading to your manifestation and growth in whatever you do? And you know, I am tempted to say, and this is a fact, this is a fact. Let me tell you something. If you are here and you don't want to live your life from hand to mouth, you don't want to live your life, you know, from... If there are some people that live their lives for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and they're earning and depending on the, on a particular salary and saving little amount and hoping to end up and get that money and live on retirement, right? And they end up just living, you know, average life, basic life, you know, hand to mouth. And sometimes when they want to do something incredible, they have to borrow money. Right, like this is one thing that is very common across Africa. There are very few families, not up to 0.8% of families in Africa can decide that they want to do something worth five million and above, they must get a loan. Very few families just have five million that they just make money effortlessly and it's lying somewhere in the bank that if they want to do something that is worth five million and above, that they can just withdraw and do it. Only about 0.8% of families can do that in Africa. Very small number. The rest of the people cannot do that. If you want to take a survey now, here, right now, in this call right now, and I ask people, if you're here right now and you, you can confidently right now do something of 5 million francs, and this is even the same in America. The research in America talks about, I think it's $5,000. Uh, $5, $5,000 or so, that very few American families uh, um, have up to $5,000 saved. That if they want to do something of $5,000, they confidently withdraw. They must either get a credit card loan or they go and borrow money from a bank or from a friend, the North America, Canada, and, and, and all of that. 
Why am I bringing this story? There are certain things you cannot get in your life until you are in a place of dominion. Until you are, if, 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 in, if in your location where you are, if you are not in a place of dominion, in your location, in your career, there are certain things like financial freedom and abundance that you will never get. Even though God loves you, even though God's grace is upon you and, and, and mercy is upon you, even though you're a child of God and you pray every day and you study your Bible, you will still struggle to do that. Not because God doesn't want to bless you, but the kingdom of God in terms of growing in wealth and prosperity and riches and dominion aligns a lot with your ability to understand the kingdom principles and wisdom and consistently applying it. You get the point? So this is critical for us to understand and make up our mind that on a, on a daily basis, we begin to take this and begin to implement so we can rise up from that slavery of lack, slavery of poverty, slavery of managing, slavery of always borrowing, slavery of always, you know, trying to catch up with life. But be in that place where we can operate from abundance, from the glory of God, and begin to do things effortlessly that can advance our lives and be significant contributors to the kingdom of God. So if you want to do a survey, if you want to do a survey right now and say, if you're here and you know that you can confidently withdraw uh, um, 5 million francs or 5 million naira, depending on where you are, uh, or, or let's say if you're in the U.S. or Canada, you can confidently withdraw $5,000 from your savings and spend and do something, and it will not affect your next couple of weeks and months in terms of your financial well-being, comment in the chat box. There will be a very small number, or basically nobody. Or basically nobody. You see, Brad... This is not so, not because it is not possible. No, it is possible, but the challenge is many people do not understand how to rise to that place. They don't understand how to get to that place. And certain things like financial abundance and well-being are mostly byproducts of where you have reason to, for example, there is no way you can rise to the place of dominion. Now, what we've been talking about as kingdom entrepreneurs and professionals, that you will not have money as the byproduct. Let me tell you something. The first time I was paid for, for two hours or so training for 2.6 million francs or so, I was like, what? In two hours of just talking, like, wow. but you know that kind of possibility cannot happen if I am below the chain, or if I'm at the lower chain, or if I'm basically somebody that nobody can recognize, or if I don't command a certain kind of dominion somewhere. There was a time in two days I spoke. I was paid three hundred thousand francs and four hundred thousand francs. Son, Saturday and Sunday, one weekend I made start a few thousand francs. I was like, what? But those kind of things you cannot get, you cannot get them until you have reason to that place. You see? So it is, that's why it is good to understand this. And I've taught you and I've insisted this here. If you are in this community, you must desire and you must walk with God and desire dominion, influence, success. It is in the Bible. Don't let anybody fool you. Abraham was not broke. Isaac was not broke. Jacob was not broke. Uh, David, I can, they were not broke people. But as I've always emphasized in this community, in whatever we do in our careers and businesses, four things always drive our foundation. Number one, righteousness. Number two, the fear of God. Number three, holiness. And number four, purity. If these are the foundation of your operations and you bring glory to God in everything that you do, I don't care how successful you are. I don't care whatever. I will support you and I will do whatever I can do to see that you see that success because there is no good news in being broke and being poor and being a nobody. And you must not be the one, even though Jesus said, the poor you will always have with you. And I always ask the question, must you be the one to be poor? 
Better be the one who can help the poor than be the one to be poor, right? That's why this teaching is important. So not only listen. If you only came here last week and you listened and you were just enjoying how I was teaching and you did not practice any of the things or you did not develop a blueprint, I've, in, I've emphasized on this very much. Anytime you are in a teaching, you are in a ministration, after that, create a blueprint of implementation. Don't just come and listen, listen, say amen, fire on, teach. Oh my goodness, the teaching was transformational. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? I always say something funny. If you follow me for more than one year and your life doesn't change in three key areas, something is wrong with you. Your, your industry status in whatever you do, number two, your financial status, and number three, your social status, something is wrong with you. There is something you are not doing with what I'm teaching you. I've done this for more than a decade, so I know the results that we get to produce in teaching and coaching and training. I don't know why I'm bringing this here, but maybe this is a warning that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to somebody and emphasize death. Because from slavery to dominion is important. Because many people end up living in slavery for so long. 30 years, 40 years, they get to 50 and 60, nothing to show for that makes sense. But meanwhile, the possibilities are there to live beyond that particular dimension and that level. Make up your mind. If you listen part one and you do not develop a blueprint, let me challenge everybody right now. When we are done with this series or as we continue this, season, this series, create a personal blueprint. Get a book. I, I have my book. Let me show you. You see this book? This book is my personal strategy book. This book like this. This book. See these things I'm right, I've written in this book? This is my personal strategy book. I write my things that I'm building. I create my blueprints for my implementation. You see? Because success is not by guesswork and assumption. Even Jesus was strategic and technical, driven by the wisdom of God. I want to challenge you right now, everybody. I want to challenge all of you right now. After this, this particular teaching of from slavery to dominion, I want to challenge all of you. Go and write down, develop your, write it, my personal blueprint to dominion. But if you are comfortable where you are, don't do it. But if you truly want to get better than where you are, go get this teaching. Go back to part one. Listen again as you're listening. Be drafting. Personal, right at the top of your notebook or journal or whatever. My personal blueprint to dominion. Whatever dominion means to you, you decide. In part one, I took time to explain what dominion means. But then use the things I am teaching because I'm going to teach it extensively again today and begin to craft out your blueprint. What is the blueprint? The things that you will start doing. If you like, put dates, put weeks, put months, put period, put seasons. But make sure that you have action plans that you're taking that will take you to that particular top. You don't get there by assumption. You don't get there by just existing. You don't, you don't get there by waking up in the morning and just waiting that, oh, this will possibly happen. This No. You become strategic. You, you work with the Holy Spirit. Many at times I'm writing something and then I'm talking, I'm talking with the Holy Spirit. What do you think about this? And that's how ideas will be popping. Or sometimes when I sleep, he begins to teach me in my sleep. Many of you, Holy Spirit doesn't teach you because you have nothing for him to teach you. So he's silent in you. The Holy Spirit is very active. But only active to people that he used to work with him, partner with him. You see? People that talk to him. Sometimes I'm writing something, I'm building a strategy. I'll be talking as if you come to my home office or wherever I feel as if I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody here. I'm, I'm talking with the Holy Spirit. Okay, what do you think? This, and I'll be getting the responses. This also comes based on how you have also, you have also been joining with him. And this is the power too of spending time with God. Spending time in his presence, reading the Bible, pray, praying in tongues. So that when you speak, Pray, and when you pray and you spend time with him, it becomes easy for him to speak to you. You are not noisy. And this is the power of fasting and prayers. Many a time when I want to build a certain strategy, I take a fast. 
I subdue my flesh. I subdue my access to social media. I minimize a lot of things so that I am very sharp to hear him talk to me. These things we need, we have access to these things. I was teaching, ministering somewhere in church today and I said, you know, the most funny thing that can happen is for Christians to have the Holy Spirit and they are confused. You see, it's, it's, it's very challenging. And, and I know the price. I, 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 have, I have recently paid the price of taking a step without asking the Holy Spirit, without really praying about it. So many people have been in different, several wrong circumstances without, because they don't know how to tap into this. I don't know why this is a, a, a serious topic, but I'm, I'm sure it's a warning for somebody and it's a challenge for somebody. Is it a warning and a challenge for anybody? If it's for you in, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Zoom, let me know. Is it a challenge for you? Is it a warning for you? Because God wants to do business with us. God wants to do business with us. The things God has been laying in my heart to do for Africa and the plans in terms of the marketplace and, and, and kingdom marketplace, I was like, my goodness, there's a lot more to do than even the people to do the work. Okay? So I want to challenge you. After this, one of your major challenges before we are meeting next Monday for for our next service, don't come to this session without having a personal blueprint plan for your dominion. These things that I have been teaching, these things that God is teaching to you, how will you use them to partner with the Holy Spirit so he can take you to where he desires you to be? There is a higher place than where you are. Okay, all right, let's get quickly into the teaching. So we look at part two and we'll continue from point four. So we started looking at what are the things that Daniel did that took him from that place of captivity, from that place of slavery to the place of dominion where he was recognized in the land as that person of authority, influence and impact. And of course, it is important to pay attention to these things and begin to work with them. The fourth thing we're going to look at is obedience to God. Obedience to God. This is one thing that is critical for people of dominion and influence to understand. You know, let me tell you something that happened a few days ago. I don't know what I was, I was doing something. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you left your seat of authority. What does that mean? I was like, digging deep, I understood what he was talking about. Because many people have disobeyed God and they have done what they feel is right. And they have left the place where God wanted to deal with them, operate with them, partner with them, and do incredible things. It could be career, business, family-wise, uh, uh, um, relationships, uh, um, whatever. But obedience to God is a critical component if you will live from the place of slavery to dominion. There are many people listening to you right now. You have been in the same spot for 10 years, 15 years, 12 years, 8 years, 7 years, 5 years. Well, what has kept you there is disobedience unto instructions from God, disobedience to God. The disobedience could be you perpetually decide to live in sin and iniquity. That disobedience alone keeps you away from being in a position where you can hear God talk to you and lead you to the path of establishment and progress and multiplication and dominion where he originally wanted to be. For some people, he specifically is not sick, he's not iniquity, but he told you to do something and you disobeyed or you did not even hear because you were not available to hear. 
There are some people that they have instructions of things that God wanted to tell them to do in 2018, 220, or 215, 218, 220. And since they are not always available in the presence of God to fast and pray or to just study the word and pray and God instruct them, they, their prayer life is, is not even there. It's, it's non-existent. So they were not even there to receive instructions for 218. They were not there to receive instructions for 220. They were not there to receive instructions for 223. They were not there at all. Disobedience. So people begin to miss out on their next level, but they begin to cry, oh my God, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. But God, God is like, but you are not available for me to walk with you for us to make this happen. You, 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 you see the challenge? God is always willing to bless. God is always willing to lift and to bless. But the challenge is many people are not available, are not willing to obey. Disobedience to God can cost you dominion, but obedience to God can place you in the place of dominion. It can keep you in the place of dominion. Understanding what to do and doing it can put you in the place of dominion. Esther understood that if I can wait upon the Lord and fast and pray and go before the king, something will happen. If I perish, I perish. But I know that there is a God that if I seek him, I fellowship with him. There is something that will rest upon me that a king cannot resist. And even if that thing doesn't rest upon me, I will still face the king because I know I stood before the king of kings. But you know something funny, which is a fact? Nobody stands before the king of kings and is resisted by an earthly king. Esther proved that, and that still happens today. Sometimes I wish we could understand these things and rise to where God wants us to do business. So Daniel understood the power of obedience to God. And this is one of the key pillars that took him to the place of dominion. Daniel was obedient to the statutes and the laws of God. When faced with diets that conflicted with the Jewish customs, he chose obedience over compromise. And God blessed him for it. Daniel chose obedience over compromise. And God blessed him for it. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. It's not, that, it's not according to my culture. We all here, if you are in the kingdom, there is something I call kingdom culture. We have a culture in this kingdom. There are things we cannot do because it's against our culture as a kingdom. You come to a place where you cannot live a certain life, not because you don't want to, but because, hey, the culture of the kingdom where you belong doesn't permit you to do that. You choose to obey the king that you submit under. And there is no kingdom where a noble in that kingdom will not obey the laws of the land and will not find favor before the king. No, no kingdom is like that. You will always be the favorite of the king if you are a noble, of that land and you obey the laws of the land. And we all are nobles because the book of Revelation says that Jesus Christ has made us priests and kings unto God. Who is God? The king of kings. We are nobles before him. When God looks at us, he sees kings and priests. He sees that. So as nobles in this kingdom, we make our minds to obey him, the king of kings. You cannot rise to dominion in this kingdom if you don't understand how to obey the king of kings. So we need to come to a place where no matter the compromise coming our way, we will always choose obedience. Let me tell you something. As entrepreneurs and professionals in the kingdom, we are, will always be in the marketplace where there will always be a lot of compromise. Things will always come our way for us to compromise and go against the laws of our kingdom so that we can fit in 
But the Bible says, even though we are of the world, even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We come from a different kingdom. We import the kingdom culture on earth. You want dominion. You want to be that kind of a person where God can invest his jealousy, his grace, his favor, his glory upon you, his wisdom upon you, that when you stand anywhere, no man can resist you. When you fight, when you stand before a door, that door open because of the glory that you carry, because of the authority that is visible in your life, because of the reality of the Holy Spirit being your senior partner with you, then one thing you must carry, the embodiment that must be part of you on a daily basis is obedience to God. It's obedience to God. Obedience is a key pillar in the journey to move from slavery to dominion. We need to make up our minds. If you truly want to operate from that dimension, because maturity is important to God when it comes to dominion and influence and power and prosperity and riches, very important to him. Because there are some people that he knows. This one, this one has, has not matured in, in, in obedience. If I bless this one financially, if I open certain doors for this one, I will lose this one. There are some people that they have not grown in their fellowship with God to the extent that, you know, when it comes to their time of prayer, nothing interrupts it. They have not grown to that level. Because like this one, if I make this one, bless this one, and they become busy, I will become second choice. And you know God likes his worship. He likes his reverence. He, he likes his children. He likes fellowship. He loves to always communicate with us on a daily basis. For some people like this one, this one has not grown. Bless this one. I will launch him into perpetual immorality because he or she will not have money now to practice the immorality. We need to grow in obedience. And obedience, growth in obedience. How do you practice obedience? Number one, number one, know the ways of the kingdom. You cannot obey what you don't know. Know the ways of the kingdom. Psalms 119 verse 11. The Bible says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see, this is the power of spending time to study the word so you know the heart of the Father. You know the ways of the Father. You know the ways of the kingdom that you are part of as a king. You know what the Father stands for. So know the ways of the kingdom. Number two, grow in your work with the Holy Spirit because he will convict you. Oh my goodness. He will prune you. He will hold you back. He will, he will tell you, don't do it. But until you have grown to that place where you are, you are willing to surrender and submit to him. Let me tell you how the Holy Spirit is. Here. For example, my, my wife is always in the call. She is here. I, I don't think I've ever done this. We have spoken. Maybe we, we have. But I happily, before I ever jump to a meet, to, to a, especially a speaking engagement or a call like this Zoom, the last thing I always do before... I come to say hello, good morning to everybody as I talk to my wife, I, I give her a call. There was a time the Holy Spirit reminded me like, you need to call your wife first. You know, I always find the call her sometimes, assistant Holy Spirit. She will tell you, she's in the call. Is that true, baby? I will finally call her assistant Holy Spirit. That's where the name actually, that's where the name actually came from. That's how close the Holy Spirit is, right? And he started with us in, in little things. But we just, that, that, the first thing is surrender. I just tell him, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. But here's one thing. Here's one challenge that many people don't get to walk very close with the Holy Spirit. You know those things that you wanted to do? And you know that, you know that God is not happy with them. You know it's against the law, it's against the scripture, but you still do it. Those things push down, push away the Holy Spirit from us. 
pushes him away very far. It grieves him because the Holy Spirit holds the word dear. That's why there are certain times that um, you have certain encounters. Sometimes he will refer you to a scripture to validate that particular encounter to you. Right? So, Number one, I was talking about steps to practice obedience, know the ways of the kingdom, spend time to grow in the world. Number two, grow in your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Number three, learn to take immediate steps of obedience. Make up your mind to be quick to obey the directives of God. Make up your mind to be quick. Make up your mind where you, you have made up your mind that you will not put anything that concerns God into second place. No. Make up your mind that anything that concerns God in your life is primary. Critically primary. It, 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 it cannot be second place. Every other thing should go second place. But if it concerns my God, it's primary. Let me give you an example of how you can start doing this. Let's say we're about to have a, a prayer meeting, a prayer time. And you're watching a very nice movie. And it's almost that climax time. The, the movie is entering that place where you cannot stop. And then it's time for prayer. If you want to grow in obedience, no matter how nice the movie is, it's not as important and as critical to your life as a time to fellowship with God. So you, be, you start taking immediate steps to obey anything or do anything that relates to God. Like I was teaching you guys one time and I said, if you, if you are still that kind of a person that one of your most easiest days, one of the most easiest things for you to do on Sunday morning is to replace Sunday service with anything. Your work with God is still very far apart, very far apart. That means you don't hold fellowship with God so sacred and so critical. Yet, when you hold it so critical, you know that you draw everything on Sunday after your time of fellowship. Because if your friends call, whatever, no, wait. If anything wants to happen on Sunday, it should be between this time and this time. Because this time is not touchable. It's uncompromisable. It's not, no, it, this time is it's not, it's, it's a no-go zone. Any, we can do anything outside this time. You see, this time is for God. The Bible says, keep the Sabbath day holy. Do you know what that means? Set it apart. Set it apart. Make it special. Consecrate a time. I say, this time is for me and God. That's the meaning of keep the Sabbath day holy. Keep it, consecrate, set it apart for your God. So on Sunday, if you know that your normal church service runs for two hours, three hours, whatever time, you go to church at 9 a.m. and you close at 12 or whatever, you know that if whoever calls, they want you to go anywhere for a meeting, for whatever, as long as it falls within a time that will interrupt your time of fellowship and going to church or whatever, say no without assuming, without thinking, without checking, without just tell no, it cannot happen. Except it's a do or die matter. God will always understand in those cases. But if it's just funny, funny kind of things, no. You see, but, but you know, here's one thing that I've not, not, not grown to know about God is when you create certain consecration, he, God, prevents certain things from happening in those times so that he can fellowship with you. Oh, see, God can, pre God, God can stop an accident from happening to you. Let's say, for example, I've heard this kind of stories many times. Let's say that um, your, your prayer time in the evening is 8 p.m. See, God, and there was an accident that was supposed to happen on your way home after work. God can, even the accident doesn't concern you, but if that accident will cause a delay and stop you from being, let's say, because let's say your altar time, I like to call it altar time, your time of prayer is, you have set time that every day between 8 p.m. to 8.30 or 9 p.m. is your time with God, and you do that every day. Heaven knows, the Holy Spirit knows, angels knows, everybody around you knows that this time is not touchable. See, God can do anything in his power, his almighty, all-powerful, release angels to stop anything 
orchestrated to stop you from to, that is orchestrated to stop you from fellowship with him and make sure that you get home at nine, eight, eight o'clock and get to your place of prayer. I have seen God promote people. I have seen God promote people so that they can have more time with him because they have been faithful in their little time that they were they were having in difficult jobs. I said that this, this one, no. This your job is no longer conducive for us to spend time and for what I want to do in your life. So let me open this door for you. Some people don't even know that that's what led to that door. They're they not, they not even spiritually discerning enough to know that God will do that. But they start with your, with what? With your faithfulness in where you are. No matter how hard and, and difficult it is, you make up your mind every day. It's fellowship with God at this time. No matter what, I will submit myself to it. This is one of the quickest ways to be lifted. One of the quickest ways for God to, because anything that will make you not to align with his will, he will fight it because his jealousy has been invested into you. I wish people understand this mystery, but it works. It works. Praise God. So learn to detect where to practice obedience is learn to take immediate steps when it concerns the things of God. You know, um, the Bible says in James 1 verse 22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And the fourth um, tip I'm giving you here is, these, these are not all, I'm just giving you tips that I've seen them in my life and I've seen them in the scripture that you can use. The tip number four on steps to practice obedience is be quick to repent. Yes, be quick to repent. Because as humans, we we'll always mess up. No, let, let me not use the word always, because it's possible to live for the whole year without doing something stupid that will hurt God. I'd like to do something, to, uh, something stupid and then you blame the devil. Oh, he was the work of the devil. Which devil? <laughs> right? People that who are living a holy, consecrated life unto the God every year, daily, consistently. Does it mean they are righteous? No. You are only righteous when you have made, you have been made, you have received Jesus Christ. It makes you righteous. Now, through that righteousness, you start living a holy life, powered by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, and of course by the Holy Spirit. But however, any if you sin, if you do anything, the best thing to do is repent. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what you did last night or yesterday eh? as long as you make up your mind and be humble and have a broken heart and come to God and say Lord mercy oh because the Bible says his mercy prevails over judgment the Bible also says that he showed mercy according to his steadfast love towards you any time any time like for example let's say that you, you commit sin now and the next 30 seconds, you turn now and say, Lord, mercy. I fell. I messed up. Mercy. He always shows mercy and he forgives. And he will not remember again. So anytime you mess up or you disobey God, no, don't run away. No, immediately, la, la, la. Right there and there. Just turn and repent. Cry for mercy. He will Listen, and he will stretch his hand as always and draw you closer to him. But this should not make you a habit. Don't, don't make it a habit of always sinning and knowing that, sin, consciously sinning. Now, now, that is not sin. You know, when you consciously live in sin, it's now known as iniquity. Right? Iniquity is intentionally living in sin. Iniquity. Right? Now, that's iniquity. And you cannot, you cannot be lifted to the place of dominion when living in iniquity. I've taught you guys, I've taught this many times to many people. One sign of iniquity in anybody's life is closed doors. Breakthrough is very scarce in that life. Very scarce. You can be living in iniquity and praying to God every day. And nothing is happening because you're in iniquity. One of the Easy products of iniquity is closed doors, stagnation, a life that is not moving forward. 
You have trained your katapapata, but for that praying seriously, but you have a sugar daddy. You are married and you have a side chick. You're praying, you're going to church. Oh, yes, it's iniquity like that. It keeps you bound. You'll be working hard, like walking like an ant. Walking hard, but nothing to show for that. You cannot find the grace of God, that effortless lifting, that, that fervor, that, that fragrance of the Holy Ghost on you, that, that glory. That, that, that glorious manifestation, you cannot just see because iniquity is keeping you away from experiencing and enjoying those things. Right? So quickly repent. When you falter, turn back to God immediately. Don't allow the devil to make you feel despised, feel as if God will hate you. That's, that's one thing the devil always do, makes you feel that no, God will not forgive you. Do you know why he's doing that? Because he wants to draw you closer to living the way he wants you to live. And as you begin to live that, live that way, he will achieve his ministry effortlessly. What's the ministry? Stealing, killing, and destroying you, right? 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. His nature is that he is faithful. You just need to confess it genuinely. He is so faithful that he will just forgive you and purify you and hug you even. Just imagine God hugging you and say, welcome back, my daughter. Welcome back, my son. This is a core pillar, a core pillar in growing in dominion. Are you being blessed so far? Are you being blessed so far? Are you being blessed? Tap the word blessed in the chat box. Are you being blessed? This is important in this, our work of manifestation and moving from slavery to dominion. Many people have stayed in slavery for so long because of this simple challenge of obedience. Some people have even left their place of dominion and they went back to slavery because they did not hear God. They just took steps based on flesh and based on what they thought was right. And God was not in that step. A reminder of that. All right. The fifth thing, what's the fifth pillar that we can find in the life of Daniel that moved him from the place of slavery and captivity to the place of uh, dominion? Um, influence and leadership. He developed influence and leadership. And I'm tempted to say, in whatever you want to do, if there are, I've, these are two heavy topics I've combined to one, but sometime very soon, I'm going to teach influence independently, how to build influence. And of course, leadership or dominion independently, but it's good I talk about these two now before that time. See, if you remove, if you remove this pillar of influence and leadership, dominion will be very far from you. Very far from you. Very far from you. Many people are survivors. Many people are copycats. Many people are average people. Many people, when you look at their life, there is nothing nice or nothing magnificent that you can look up to. Now, how do you want to have dominion when there is nothing around you, in you, around, within you, on top of you, but beside of you, whatever of you, from your mouth, from your eyes, from your head, there is nothing that can leave you and influence another human being or lead another human being. Forget about dominion. Forget about it. It's where influence and leadership comes in. You cannot live life consistently acting like a survivor, thinking like a survivor, talking like a survivor, and expect to command dominion. You cannot live life consistently being shallow, in the way you talk, in the way you think, in the way you look at things, in the way you analyze things, in the way you act, in everything that you do in the last 10 years and five years and expect to handle certain tangible things. No, it, it cannot happen. It cannot. So Daniel understood this. 
Daniel knew. If I, if, I, if I come to Babylon and I have a survival mentality, I will remain a slave till I die. You cannot be a survivor and dominate at the same time. No. You cannot find survival, survival mindset and dominating mindset in the same human being. One has to be more, you know, dominant. It's the same like with Joseph. If Joseph went to Potiphar's house, because the Bible records that because of Joseph, Potiphar experienced blessing and he promoted him to chief of head to, to chief of house boys, right? Why? Influence, leadership. Dominion. If you went there and it was just a normal, you know, survival, just making like that, just being, being there, no drive, no passion, no contribution, nothing, just being there, he would have never been promoted, and he would not be even be in a place where Potiphar's wife would have tried to sleep with him, and they would take him to prison that would lead him to the palace. You see. Because I don't think Potiphar's wife did the same thing with a common house boy that, you know, I, I've taught this many times, and it's also from experience. Um, talking about Potiphar's wife and Joseph, you know, dominion and, and influence and, and um, all these kind of things makes you attractive, especially as a man, makes you attractive to women. Women throw themselves at you and all of that. And if you're a believer, for example, and you're going somewhere, one of the best ways, for, I, talk, I think I said this here many times, I don't know if this community, the devil fights a man who has a destiny with three key things, women, fame, and money. A Christian, you're a believer, and he knows that your future is so bright and so <clears throat> He has seen because the devil he sees everybody's future. The good thing is he doesn't, he doesn't have the power to edit it or to destroy it. He can just try to distract and do those funny, funny stuff. But he cannot stop it. He cannot delete it. He cannot do anything with it. He can only distract and try to cover up and do those kind of stuff. So for, for men, what will he do? Send women. And naturally, as a man, if you have leadership, you have influence you have dominion you are in front of things you know you you are always in front of people and tv and the media and you seem like you're successful and all of that it makes you very attractive very you're not attractive because you are really you you, you can see a, a man that is tall and fair and having abs and women are not falling on the slave queens will fall to them women that make sense that have sense they will not go for apps and, and yellow fair boys. They know what they're looking for. Something else is attractive in men than that. And the devil will pack them to you. Pack them to you. Pack, send them your way. Oh, I saw them. I saw them. I was just telling my wife one time that the number of women that used to come to me with their projects and advice and acts, immediately I announced my wife, they went to zero. The, I don't see them again. I'm like, what the hell? And before that, I have seen things. Since I go to speak in a country, in a city, before you see it, I speak in a conference in my hotel room. Before you know it, a girl will just come in the night and say, oh, this is here. I, I noticed your hotel room. I brought food for you. Who asks you to bring food? Who asks you to bring food? There are some left and right. Some who will send um, uh, selfies uh, saying, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm just here in the study room and I was bored and send selfie that they are bored, but the selfie showing that they are bobbies. What kind of kind kind of technical selfies, right? Those who buy all kinds of gifts. I've, I've given gifts out to friends and people until shoes and sometimes the Holy Spirit just tell me, don't wear that one, don't wear. The last one that I sent, the last one I sent to one of my nephews, he said, I, I saw a big parcel from you. And then he said, I, I saw a letter inside addressed to you. And we laughed about it. So it's a, a lady's bought, you know, shoes as a gift, sent, and then wrote a love letter inside and sent. So it was lying in my office for some months. I just said, 
that you sent to one of my nephews is going to feed him. So when he, re I did not tell him that the shoes were coming. So when he received it, he, so he knew that it was for me. And when he opened, he was still puzzled. And I've never opened, I did not open it. There was not in the country when it came and all of that. So when he opened, he saw a long love letter there uh, written, written for me. He said, I, I get the gift, but I saw a letter the instant addressed to you. I, I don't understand. I just love I said, can you burn the letter? I didn't even read. I don't know what this is. I said, I just said burn the letter. He just understood and then we laughed and that was it. What am I trying to say? He, he would do that. Be why? Because he knows if he lives in fornication, sexual immorality, all of that, his light will never shine. In the devil knows. When that doesn't work now, it will now make you start liking money. Start liking. Luckily for me, I was already a hard worker seeing so money doesn't entice me. Whether you have one billion or three billion, that one is your problem. After that, you will now bring fame and then plant pride in your heart. Or when God is lifting you, he'll be planting pride in your heart. Makes you to like fame and then not be in the presence of God. Makes you only chase fame, chase success, chase fame, chase success, chase fame. And then you will not have time to wait upon the Lord and do the things you do before God. That's his work. And they will make you to be proud when you talk. You, 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 know, you know me. You know me. You know me. Right? He'll make you not, you will not speak with humility and respect and understanding and counsel and empathy. No. He'll plan those things, these three things. You start noticing them in your life as a man, be careful. Run closer to God because only the Holy Spirit can purge that away from you. Only Him can keep you holy. Only Him can begin to break your heart and, and, and all of that. It's very important. For, for women, most especially, what the first thing that you know comes is he begins to plant this kind of thing that you cannot be submissive to a man again. You know, you 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 are gifted, you are a strong woman, you are you are this because he will he will always push you to do things that are against the ways of the kingdom. For women, he will begin to put pride. Number two, he will begin to make you to uh, um to idol worship of your body, the way you'll be feeling that you are beautiful, you are this, you, you always feel that you're you, you always looking at yourself in the mirror, you begin to feel that you want to increase your boobs and increase your Botox and all of that. Uh -huh. it, it's him like that. It's him poking you, poking you and all of that. He'll begin to bring in those things, all of that. The next thing to is money. Money will begin to make you like money and all of that. And yes, because he has seen where you're going to... Hmm, he needs to plant those things for you to like them and love them. Go and study these things in patterns of great men and great women who rose and fell, rose and fell and all of that. You will see them. Young ladies who are rising very bright. Before you know it, they are nowhere to be found. They cannot get married again. They cannot do anything that makes sense. They are basically just there. Pride has made them. They thought that their beauty was the best. And not knowing that as a woman, your beauty is short-lived. When you can, you are reaching... Uh, 40 maximum and all of that is no longer beauty that talks. It's not the quality of your sense and the quality of your integrity that brings value to the table. Beauty begins to die, die out. You see? So if you are, he makes you in, in your early between at the age of 17 and so he begins to make you valuable, your beauty and all of that idol worship. Begin to idol worship your body and you forget the things that are eternal, things that value after that beauty will expire which is your relationship with God, the quality of your brain, the quality of your vision and passion and what you're driving at and all of that. You see, that's why some women, when they get married at the age of 35, 40, their husbands find them nothing relevant again, nothing useful per se. All you can do now is what? Babies, take care of babies and just be a housewife per se. There's nothing sexy about you. Again, because your body is failing off, there are more hotter girls out there, but you need now to show something better that you can look at and say, my goodness, this is a wife. There's no, there, there are hotter girls outside, yes, but they cannot pray like this woman. There are hotter girls outside, yes, but they don't have brain like this, my wife. There are hotter girls outside, yes, but they cannot contribute to my project like my woman contributes. There are better girls outside, yes, but they cannot counsel me like my wife counsel me. You, you, see, that, you see where that comes in now? But if in your youthful years, you begin to take you, you begin to club and begin to depend on your beauty, how many boys are chatting you, you begin to just be here on Facebook now, social media is everywhere now, the more followers and likes you have, you begin to feel that you have arrived. 
when those things are short-lived. Maximum 10 years, they expire. The real thing now that makes a woman, you will not have it. If you're a woman here, you are listening to me. Pay attention to these things. The greatest thing that will make you stand out in your husband's eyes and in the front of society as a whole and your family your, is not your beauty. It's not. When you enter 35 and 40, you say it's going to be fading away. But other things that are eternal now will make sense. Different things will make you hotter and make you beautiful and a gracious woman before your man and before your family members than that your beauty. But he will not make you to value it more and cover you not to think very well. I don't know why I spend time here a lot, but I think it's one of those warnings for some people. Why are you challenged with that? So some women may need to repent from that same for men. Okay? So influence and leadership, right? So Daniel was not merely a survivor. He was an influencer. He was a leader. He was a contributor. He was solving problems. He was influencing the system. He was leading in his own way. He was not just, you know, one local champion boy, one comfortable, lazy looking boy, one insignificant human being. No, you cannot do those kind of things and live like that and expect to command dominion. In Babylon, as a captive, as a slave, he became a top administrator. He became an advisor to kings. He was bringing godly values into an ungodly system. Look at that. He brought something valuable into an ungodly system. The son of God was talking about women. What can you bring into your husband's life, into your, into your family, into the business, or what you guys have been called to do? What do you bring? Spiritually, professionally, counsel-wise, industry-wise, what do you bring? Same for a man. What do you bring to the family? You are just there. No vision for the family. No, no, no plan. No, even there are some things that instead your, your woman or your wife is struggling to think about and all of that. I am the kind of man that I want my wife to, to trust me that I know where we are going to. I know where we are going to, and we are going to get there. Support me. Give me the counsel. Give that one step at a time. And I always have a plan. But for some men, there's no plan. They are just there. They're just hand to mouth. Salary, end of month, life goes on. There's no idea. What if the company you're working for dies out tomorrow? They're with the government. What if they appoint a new director tomorrow and he doesn't like you and they sack you? What's the plan? What's a career plan? What's a 10 year, 15 years career plan? The world is evolving, technology is changing. What are you thinking? Influencing and leadership. Daniel was bringing godly values into an ungodly system. What values are you bringing into where you are that positions you as an influencer, as a leader in the marketplace? His dominion was a result of not only his obedience and his faith and his integrity, but his dominion was powered by his ability to influence and to lead. Many Christians are broke because they are godly. They have godly values. They believe in God. They can fast and pray in tongues, but they cannot influence anything where they are. They cannot lead any project where they are. They have nothing that they can bring to the table that makes sense. We need to operate from that dimension. It's a key pillar in moving from the place of slavery to the place of dominion. Let me tell you something. This is one of those things that if you know it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in a village, you are from the poorest family, you are, you are listening right now, you have nothing to eat the next minute. There are things that when you know and you begin to implement, they can bring food to your table and much more. I've shared my story many times. More than a couple of years ago, exactly I was, I, I was living with friends. I could not pay my own house rent. I was doing Okada, doing car wash, working in building construction sites and all of that. But there are things you begin to grow and I begin to learn and begin to know and begin to implement. They automatically begin to shift your life and every other thing around you. You see somebody remains in the same place for so long, 
then there is nothing that they are absorbing and receiving that can contribute to their rising in life. Daniel chapter 2, verse 48. Remember we're using Daniel as our blueprint. Daniel chapter 2, verse 48. The Bible says the king placed Daniel in a high position, ruler over the entire province of Babylon. Why did he place him there? Influence, leadership, contribution. He brought something to the king. He was so good that he cannot be ignored. Like I always fondly say, one of my goals in life is to become so good and so excellent that whether you hate me or like me or not, you cannot ignore me. You cannot ignore me. Whether, whether our political ideas don't agree, whether our religious beliefs don't agree, when it comes to business, you see me to be so good and so valuable that you, you're going to keep your religious beliefs aside and hire me for us to do business. That's what Daniel did. Daniel and the king had differences in religious beliefs. They had differences in many things. But come on, come on, come on. This guy was so full of wisdom and the anointing and ideas and influence and leadership that the king could not ignore him. The king was forced to place him as a ruler over an entire province of Babylon. You know what that means? To be a ruler of a province in the most powerful economic country and civilization at the time. It's like you, you come to the US or you go to Canada or a third country like UK and all of that, and in less than how many years you become so good that they look and say, no, the only way that we can keep this man close to us is to make him or her a state governor or a this minister or whatever, because we cannot ignore him. You are, you are not born in that country. You are not even a citizen. But you are so valuable that you so save the economy. You so save the political system that the only way they can do is, you know what? We are going to break protocols and elevate you to this level. You know what that is? Influence and leadership. I'm asking you a question right now. What dimension of influence and leadership will you bring? Let's start from the lowest level to your family. Let me start with wives. All the women, if you are married here, if you are married here, type in the chat box married. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm about to stop teaching and then we pray. If you are, if you are married in the chat box, type the word married. Go ahead. Ladies only. Where are my ladies at? Where are my ladies at? Go ahead. If you are, Don't be shy. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Good. Um, I want to ask you one question, ladies. One question. One question. As a married lady, what influence and leadership will you bring into your family and into your husband's life? Into your family first as a whole and into your husband's life that will take you guys to the place of dominion as a family. Spiritually, start from there. Professionally, start from there. Even life-wise, start from there. If you cannot pinpoint it, no problem. Now is a message for you. You see, as a woman, you can decide and take a course. I was reading a story today on LinkedIn where a lady took a course on finance. She was a medical doctor. She took a course on finance so she could contribute and advise the husband. Oh my goodness. I was so inspired by that story. A medical doctor. She was now forced to take a master's degree in finance so she could do something in business and be more valuable to the husband and what they are building as a family. So if you act as a woman, I don't know. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong. It's the beginning of transformation. It's the beginning of growth. For, for my single ladies, it's the same thing. Begin to find out what can you bring before professionally now begin to think Spiritually, what can you bring? Never play with the prayers of a woman. Oh my goodness. One of the things I believe is that a woman has a soft spot before God and man. I, I don't know why, but I feel so. And I always tell my wife, before we forget professionally now, let's start spiritually. You don't need to learn that one. And you fast and pray for your husband. 
Can you, can you discern? Can you spiritually discern that your husband is about to get involved into a deal that he's not telling you? But he's about to get involved into something that may cause him problems. Can you discern in the spirit and say, Honey, I feel like something that is not good is coming your way. Are you about to get into a deal that doesn't make sense that you're not telling me about? He may not try to tell you because of ego. Men have ego. It's part of us that God created us. But you can decide, okay, no problem. On my altar, after three days of fasting and prayer, that deal will not pull through. Whatever wants to come, I neutralize it. I know a woman who did that. She stopped that nonsense from happening. The, the husband told her the letter and how he did not go through. She, she, he did not know that it was the woman on the altar that she stopped that nonsense from happening. You don't know there's a side chick chatting your husband on WhatsApp or Facebook claiming to be a friend. Meanwhile, that side chick has gone to a baba, one native doctor, and has put something in her tongue or wherever. The day she just speaks with your husband and your husband hears, just hear her voice, lost, begin to pick up. She's, he's gone. He's gone like that. There are women now put things on their tongue and they do that. But you can neutralize that. You can raise a hedge of fire anointing around him that whatever they speak about doesn't make sense. Why? Because there's a woman at the altar, a valuable woman, an influencing spiritual woman at the altar. You can release favor over the works of your hands over your husband. That's influencing. That's you leading there spiritually. That you can come professionally. What can you contribute directly? If you think they're going to do anything, can you read a book? Can you take a course? Can you start watching YouTube videos so you can have a sense of what you can bring to the table and understand where you guys are going to? Where are my men at? Where are the men at? You think I will not come to you? It's our turn now. The men, I want to ask you a question right now. I know that you're already a leader in the family as a man, but are you truly influencing and leading in the way God wants you to lead? Are you truly doing that? If you are not, you need to start. If you have been doing, I want to ask you a question. What new ways do you need to start doing it? What new ways can you bring to the table? What new ways can you lead your family? What new ways can you lead your wife? What new ways can you support her? What new ways can you inspire her? What new ways can you hold her along? It's a daily thing. We are all learning in this thing. Nobody went to the school of marriage before getting married. We are all in the learning process. Every day you keep learning. But that's the question for you. How are you influencing? Now we are done with family now. Your immediate family. For those who are singles and all of that, you now know what you will need to start preparing for. Now, we can go to extended family. Your parents, your nephews, your siblings, and all of that. What can find the same thing? Then we can go now to your job sites. What ways can you influence and you can you lead that can make you so relevant and so significant and so great that you can be promoted? You can even be made a partner. How can you do that? Let's go to your industry. How can you influence your industry? The community, the nation, it's in layers. It's in layers. But it's one step at a time. It's one step at a time. All right, quickly, and then we pray. Steps to practice influence. A couple of things that you can do to practice influence. Number one, start by doing that gap analysis that we have done right now. Those questions of asking you their gap analysis. Do a gap analysis. Where, where are you failing to lead and to influence? So people don't even know where to influence. But this gap analysis can show you where you need to influence. Right? Number two, lead by example. Yes, yeah, start leading by example. It's not about talk. It's by example. It's by example. It's, by, it's not about talking, talking. Don't, don't just say you're a virtuous woman. No. Do the things that virtuous women do. Don't just talk about it. Daniel 1.8. 
But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with royal food and wine. Example, he did not say, I, I will drink, oh, I'm not, I'm not drinking me that drink. He just said, I am not, don't bother saving it to me. I am not doing it. It will not just talk. He did it practically, right? So he set an example of purity and obedience to God. Number four, how can you practice influence and leadership? Assist others. Be of service to other people. There is no way you can lead and influence without being of service to anybody. Like I was talking, giving examples of wives and husbands, all of that. Those are areas of services. Spiritually, professionally, be of service. At your job site, community, industry, wherever. Find a way, be of service to people. You cannot talk about influence and leadership if you are not of service to any human being. Be in a place where you elevate another person, elevate your husband, elevate your wife, elevate your organization. Be in a place of elevation, just as Daniel did. He did this very well with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 49, the Bible says, Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed, look at, at Daniel's request, service to others. At the, apart from Daniel serving the king, influencing the king and leading in that area, but he also assisted and served his other friends. The Bible says, moreover, at Daniel's request, at Daniel's request, the king appointed, he, and he asked the king, if you will appoint me like this, I need you to appoint my friends. Appoint Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the Bible says the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. You see that? Be of service to other people. More influence. Leadership. How are you serving other people? And lastly, grow and speak with wisdom. Grow and speak with wisdom. There is no way you can have influence if you don't talk sense. You don't talk sense. Some people, they go to a meeting, they sit quiet from start to be, to end. No wisdom contributed. So we can go back to marriages. I say, why if you don't, which wisdom do you bring? And you cannot bring wisdom you don't have. That's why you need now to grow in it. Speak wisdom. Contribute wisdom. Speak wisdom. Speak wisdom. Grab wisdom. Grow wisdom consistently and use that wisdom to serve. Speak it. Write wisdom. Speak it. Do that. Just add another one. Stand for a higher purpose. Yes. The last one. Stand for a higher purpose. There are many ways to grow in influence. As I said, I will teach influence extensively because it's critical to know. Stand for a higher purpose. If you will grow in influence, stand for something higher than yourself. One thing that made Daniel to be influential in Babylon was that he stood for a higher purpose. He refused to serve their God and stood for his God, higher purpose. If it means that you threw me into the lion's den, no problem. I prefer the lion's den than to do what you want me to do, higher purpose. Find a higher purpose. What is your purpose in life? That's a higher purpose. You can start from your family. Let's say for wives. A lot of talk about submission, feminism, and all of that, but the Bible says, a good wife submits. Say, so you know what? The Bible, what the Bible says is higher purpose. I stand for that. Man, everybody are having two, three side chicks. All of that is not normal to have only one woman. You must have wife and then side chicks. Higher purpose, fidelity, one wife, according to the will of the father. Higher purpose. Wherever you are, at what level and level, find a higher purpose. It puts you in the place of influence and leadership. Career-wise, business-wise, professional in your industry, in your community, find a higher purpose and stand for it. As we pray, as we pray, let's note the following. Never compromise your faith because of struggles. 
Daniel did not compromise his faith because of struggles. Number two, never compromise your faith because of a new environment. Daniel was in a new environment, but his faith was not compromised. Like many people, when they travel to different countries and cities, the way they were committed to God begins to drop. You are not leaving the presence of the one that can lift you in that city, bless you in that city, show you the way you should go. Who will now help you now? Never compromise your faith because of your new environment. Never compromise your faith because of new laws. And never compromise your faith because of the way everyone is doing it. Because everyone is doing something in a particular way doesn't mean it's the truth. No, stand with your faith. Stand with what the Bible says and what God is saying. Hallelujah. Were you blessed so far? Praise God. All right. We are going to continue the... I've not finished a couple of important things in this series. So part three on how to move from slavery to dominion will continue part three next week because this is critical. This is critical. Again, as I said, I am giving all of you a challenge. I'm giving all of you a challenge. You may need to go back and listen part one and then this part two. Draft a blueprint. Write a personal blueprint. Write my personal blueprint to dominion and craft it. And you will see how God will partner with you and take you to that place of the dominion where he wants you to be. There's a better place than where you are right now. There's a better place for all of us than where we are right now. But until we partner with him and do our part, we will not see anything incredible happening because a life of possibilities is also a life of responsibilities and commitment to God. Amen and amen. One prayer point. One prayer point I want us to pray and then we do our normal prayer ministrations and we are good to go. One prayer point. Lord, show me, grant me the wisdom to get to where you want me to be. There is something called the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom. And one thing that wisdom does is it begins to show you the path that you need to follow, the path that God wants you to follow so that he can launch you to your destiny. Just open your mouth and begin to make that prayer point. Go ahead, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Go ahead, just ask God for that revelation ask god for that revelation ask god for that revelation father show me lord show me lord show me go ahead go ahead go ahead ask him the bible says he who lacks wisdom should ask and he who is faithful will give you go ahead go ahead somebody go ahead somebody go ahead go ahead and begin to pray Begin to pray, 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 begin to pray. Yes, begin to pray, begin to pray. Ask God for it, ask God for it, ask God for it. Ask God for it, ask God for it, ask God for it. Yes, Lord, we ask for wisdom. Wisdom, Father. Wisdom to move from the place where we are to the place where you want us to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. Our last thing that we would normally do is let's now begin to pray. I'm going to just, just pray for pray, personal prayer points. If there is something that is in your heart that you want God to do, intervention this week, whatever you are waiting upon the Lord for, anything that is close to your heart and you want God to intervene, it's time now to begin to pray for it. Go ahead, begin to intercede for it, begin to pray for it. Feel free to put in the chat box in a private message and I'll pray for it. I'll begin to mention it that what God instructed me to do and we will definitely be seeing miraculous intervention by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead, begin to pray. Just begin to pour it out. Begin to pour out your heart to the Father. He's a loving Father. He's a prayer answering God. He's a God that shows up. He shows up anytime we pray, anytime we call upon him. Come on, somebody go ahead. Father, thank you.
Lord, I pray for your son as he seeks spiritual upliftment. Holy Spirit, quicken him. Holy Spirit, quicken him in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, plant, plant, plant into his heart the desire for your word, the desire for prayer in the name of Jesus. Let there be a quickening. Let there be a quickening now in the name of Jesus. I enforce the victory of Jesus over your life in the name of Jesus. I enforce the victory. The Bible says that thanks be to God who has made us victorious through Christ Jesus. I decree and I declare the victory of Jesus will be made manifest in your life. Um, Donna, I just had the victory of God will be made manifest in the works of your hands in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray. I pray for you, Christabel. Just lay your hands, lay your hand on your throat. It's going to come out now. Lay your hands on your throat. Thank you, Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I command that thing stuck in your throat out now in the name of Jesus. I command it out now in the name of Jesus. I command it to come out now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. It's coming out and it's seizing and it's healed in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I pray that your scholarship, the favor of God, rest over your fires and your scholarship will be partially funded in the name of Jesus. And not mm -hmm. partially funded. As you step out, as you step out in that journey, you will find more help in the name of Jesus. Heavens will release more help in your journey in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for I know that you have done it in the name of Jesus. Let there be the favor of God over your fires that will lead to their salary increment in the name of Jesus. Let the angels of God be released to intervene in that case in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, let the favor of God rest over your file for your financing and over the scholarship of your husband in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God intervene. Let the heart hand of God intervene in that case right now in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance, I speak deliverance, I speak deliverance over your family and over your business in the name of Jesus. The Bible mm -hmm. says that we have been made holy by the blood of Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus over your business. I speak the blood of Jesus over your business. Watch us. Mm -hmm. I speak the blood of Jesus over your mm -hmm. business in the name of Jesus. Watch us. Take some time. Take some time and begin to plead the blood of Jesus over your business. Plead the blood of Jesus. What will begin to happen is there will be a separation. There will be a separation from what Ever that is not of God in your business in the name of Jesus. Because when the blood of Jesus rests over anything, there's always a separation unto holiness. A separation unto holiness in the name of Jesus. That's what I just had to that I'm giving you that instruction. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive the glory. Receive the glory. Let there be provision. Miraculous supplies for school fees. Miraculous supply. Holy Spirit, touch the heart of the right people to supply the school fees in this case in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare every entrepreneur and professional here, you are blessed in your going out and coming in in the name of Jesus. The Lord mm -hmm. releases his angels to take charge of you in your going out and coming in in the name of Jesus. Whatever you find to do, whatever you do and you will continue to do this week is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. As you mm -hmm. step out this week, the Bible says he has covered us with favor as with a shield. Let the favor of God engulf you and go with you everywhere you go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. God bless you, everybody. It's going to be a blessed week anytime. It's very important. There's something I always talk about spiritual consciousness. As you step out, know that you are a blessed child. Know that you carry the favor of God. Know that the shield of God is over you. Know that you are not normal. You are, you are, you are a supernatural child of God. And God loves you and he favors you. He sustains you. He goes ahead of you by day and by night in the name of Jesus. That should be your faith and you will continue to shine and move from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Love you guys. God bless you. See you same time next week as we continue 
in Jesus' name. Remember, continue to talk about the fellowship to your colleagues, to your people, so that we begin to point more people back to God. Receive the courage. Some people have never mentioned this to anybody. Go beyond that. Be a channel that God can use you to draw people closer to him, especially, you know, people that uh, professionals and entrepreneurs that who are looking for where they can grow at the same time simultaneously with career and business. People are looking for those kind of players, and that's why you are here. All right, so be that channel. Don't be selfish with it. Talk about it. It's very important so that the goal, the foundation here is that let us take as many entrepreneurs as prof and professionals as many as possible to heaven. That's the goal. Let when rapture happens, when we get to heaven, let us find more billionaires and more millionaires from different nations in heaven who came through you, all right, in Jesus' name. So make sure you are an evangelist, you are passionately talking about this to one or two people every day, every week, in Jesus' name. God bless you and have a great week.